So 2000, number two, relative velocities, and we're looking at shortest distances. Kind of a tricky question. The only thing I would ask you is that you can remain silent. So please. So if you're just done, you're working on the other questions. Pick any one you want over there. At a certain instant, ship Q is a distance 4A due east of ship P. So Q is here. So I can just make it nice and big. Q is there. That doesn't work directly west, but P is over there, and we're told the distance is 4A. Q is moving northward with constant speed U. So Q is moving up in that direction with a speed the velocity of Q is equal to U. P is moving, traveling at constant speed to U, and find the direction of P if it is to intercept Q. So P is traveling in that direction, velocity of P, and it's traveling at speed to U. The trick here, if you get it, it's nice, it's a very easy question. If you don't know this, this is a part of it, you're not going to be able to answer the question. And it's as follows, that should be vertical, it's going to hold up like that. For a collision, G, G components must be equal. So, is it, sir, is it J or I? Well, it's, it's, if, it depends on what I call my j axis or my i axis. But in this case, it must be this component here. Because as this is getting, as p is going farther and farther up, it must be moving up. As it's moving across, it must be moving up at the same speed as, as the black one. Yeah. Because if the black one is moving quicker, then by the time p gets over to that line, the black one would be gone. Yeah. Or if it's moving too quick, it can get to the, the line before p gets there. So their j velocities must be the same. This guy is theta, which is what we're looking for. So what's the g component of vp? Uh, 2u sine theta. Yep. 2u sine theta is the j component of this one. And that must be equal to the j component of this. And this guy, Lawrence, only has the j component, so it's u. U's cancel out. Sine theta is a half. Theta is 30 degrees. We're done. Uh, that was a, what does it want me to do now? Find the direction of P if it is intercept Q. Just step one. Find the time in terms of A and U it would take P to intercept Q. So if it did intercept it, it would be at 30 degrees. So we we'll keep this going here. That doesn't quite look like 30 degrees, but anyway. In other words, find the time it takes to get from there to there. And you will always, or at least you should be doing what I do, which is constantly going back and rereading the question. First part of it, find the time p in terms of a and u, it would take p to intercept q. So basically, find a time for this guy to get to there. A couple of variations on this. You're looking for a time, so it'll be a distance and a velocity. And all you've got to make sure is what, Felix? The, the time is the same. OK, the time is consistent, or that the distance and the velocity are in the same direction. So I'm, if I'm going to talk about this velocity, then the distance must be that distance. If I'm talking about, similarly, I could say the time it took to get from there to there. Right? So I could say that distance divided by that time, this distance divided by this time, or sorry, the distance divided by velocity, and that distance and that velocity. Uh, does it make any difference which one I get? What's the easiest guy to get? What, in fact, what one do I have a distance for? Well, you've got bottom your 4A on the bottom line. If you make a triangle out of the 4A. So what would, be my, what would be my velocity in this direction? Lawrence, next option is to move you over at this stage. Right? Should not do that. I could say 4A is my distance, but what velocity would it have in that direction? Of what? Well, I want to find it's it. Be, yeah. well, from there to there. P, P's got 2. It's going to be 2U squared is equal to. It'll be 2U squared minus U squared is equal to X squared. 2U squared. You can use Pythagoras. You're right, that'll get a joke. You'd have that squared plus that squared equals that squared. Another way to do it is saying my velocity in this direction using your triangle, would be 2u cos theta. Velocity of p in the i direction. Yeah? yeah? So I can have that velocity and that distance, or I could use this distance, this velocity, and what would be my, in fact, it's a bit trickier here. Uh, it it works better that way. Well, I prefer that if you... Uh, if you have, you can just leave cos, uh, or cos, cos, cos of uh, 30 is whatever. 
Yeah. It works yeah. out yeah. nice and handy. Okay, okay, so we take, oh, sorry, probably we take this one. Velocity is distance over time. I'm looking for a time, so time is distance over velocity, and my distance is 4a, and my velocity in that direction is 2u cos of 30 degrees, is so root 3 over 2? Yeah. yeah. Root 3 over 2 would be the same as bringing my root 2 above, or over 2, by going there. Q's cancel, and I'm left with 4a over u root 3, and because it's got all square roots, because it's got a's, because it's got u's in it, I'm thinking, what the hell did I just calculate there? What are my units? Five seconds. Seconds. Is there is there anything? Because like the start of the question is just distance for a speed u. It's not in in the metric system, right? So that's what it means there. Yes, rather than the. Which four a over u root three is going to give you? So we're looking at the next part of the question, which, like I said, it's not helpfully indicated in that we're now moving on to part B if you want. If instead after time t over two, so after t over two, and you're right, Lawrence, it doesn't actually say seconds, so I think you should be don't know that that's actually seconds. If it can say any word, move on to the second part. The speed of p drops to a constant speed u without changing direction. Find the sharpest distance between p and q. So what you really want to do for this part of the question is says, after time t over 2 has elapsed, we have a new problem. So to begin with in this new problem, we want to know, well, where are the two objects, right? After time t over 2, how far they started off here, p and q, they finished up here. How far would p have got in half of that time? How far would p be gone along this line in half that time t? It's going to constant velocity, so therefore, half the distance. So it'd be half the distance along here, so it'd be there somewhere. How long would this guy have gone after half time t? It took time t to get from there to there, so after half the time, it'd be halfway up. Right? Yeah, it'd be at the same height above this guy here, yeah, because they're both at the same j velocity. Does it not matter if p has changed? Yeah, so from now on, but just at the beginning, as it changed it, where was it just before it changed the speed? It didn't change it until half the time had elapsed. So where is it just at that halfway spot? So if I redraw that, I have a P here, I have a Q here, and now the distance between them is going to be what? How far will V P have traveled on the x-axis? 2A. It'll have traveled halfway across here. So that shouldn't have been, my 30 degrees would be, 30 degrees would be somewhere there, and halfway would be there, which would be there. In other words, half, it's gone from there to there, so it crossed 4a in time t, so in half of t, it'll have gone halfway across it, so the distance between them will be 2a. So that's what I'm now going to do is say, right, we're looking at the problem with fresh, we're going to say, right, what happens after t over 2 seconds? So we'll say, well, where were they after t over 2 seconds? They were both at the same height, and they were distance 2a apart. What about their velocities? What about this guy's velocity? Can we go back to the question and you read it again? It stays the same. The speed of p drops to constant speed u without changing direction. And it doesn't actually tell us about q, so you would, therefore it implies that q is still the same. So the velocity of q is equal to what? U j. U, okay, in the j direction. The velocity of p, it didn't change direction, so my angle is still 30 degrees. And what is velocity going to be? U. So VP is equal to U. But it makes no sense if you're trying to do that by Pythagoras then. Correct. You can't do Pythagoras here. Because it doesn't complete this triangle. It, like when it travels, it's not going to meet it up here anywhere now. Oh, so at this stage, fine. they're not going to pass each other out. In which, by the time U gets to my vertical here, would Q be at the vertical, would it have gone past it, or would it be before it? It would have gone past it. It would have gone well past it. By the time this guy gets over here, the black one would have gone well past it. 